Projective tolerance zone is something that can really save you here. Projective tolerance zone, we already have a dynamic tolerance zone, right? And it goes through the entire width of the feature. Where, however deep that hole goes, that's how deep it is, right? So we, when we say that we're going to project it, it's how much we're projecting extra above that original tolerant zone. And that is not offset. You know, I see them putting that up there and saying, oh, it's following this axis, so it's over here. That's not right at all. I'm going to tell you why. Because this projected tolerance zone is located with a basic dimension just like that one is. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm straightening this axis even more. So we only put this on threaded holes. We're going to put this on threaded holes because when a threaded hole is angled, you're never going to get that screw start. And it's going to interfere with the clearance hole, right? So the, the rule is, how much engagement do I have in the threads? So if I've got this, this is what we've got, you guys. We've got a countersink hole, and then we've got a countersink screw that goes so far. Right? Then go all the way through the part. I don't know how far it engages. So this distance in comparison to the thickness of the, the part with the clearance hole. Now we have to go to the MMC, which is the worst case of this. Right? Because it can be produced at its thickest and then this hole is longer. So if this is less than this, then we add a projected tolerance zone. Does that make sense? That's when we use it. Because I've got to go all this way. And if this tolerance zone is not straight until I get down to here, this is way over here, like if the thread is like over here, and I gotta go all this way, I'm never gonna get started into that thread. I need this thread to be as straight all the way through the thickness of this next part so that I can start that thread and never interfere with that hole. And I'm making a big mess of this. But if I have threaded hole here, and I have the thickest this part can be, and I have a clearance over here. If this, imagine this is this tall. Let's exaggerate it. And this thread is like that. It's never going to start. One reason is, if you have something real thin, you, you can kind of wallow this out. And make a star. Think about sheet metal, right? But if this is really tall and this is holding that screw really straight, it's never going to be able to bend around and get started on that thread if it's happening. So if this, if this part at its tallest, which would weigh the most, it's a positive feature. MMC goes to the plus side. If the amount of engagement of our screw is less than the thickness of this, then we put that projected tolerance zone on our threaded holes. That keeps our threaded holes straight. Because we've got a lot further to go here, and we can't angle that screw when that, that hole is that tall. Can't angle it that much. Look at this. I can angle like that, but when I get a taller part, 
I cannot angle my screw as much. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? So if that's like this, and I have this angle. All right, I can get this screw through here and maybe get it started. But when this hole is this tall, and I'm exaggerating this, this hole, can, this, this thing can't angle this much. It's going to have to come down a lot straighter and then go into this angle hole. It's not going to work. Does that make any more sense? I keep drawing it the same way, expecting a different result. Isn't that the definition of insanity? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you get it? Do you get it? Kind of? What have I got here? Give me a couple things here. I'll show you. I'll show you, bad guy. All right. About the same size hole here. And I've got this thing from over here where everybody's going to come and see it. I can angle that and get that started through there. But if this hole is this tall, I'm not going to be able to angle it that much. You see that I can't angle that as much as I can that? Does that make any sense? Because it's it's keeping it a lot straighter, a lot longer. Right here, you kind of angle part of the screw out this way. Whereas I gotta put it all the way down through here. I can't angle it out the side. Like, well, here it is, right here. And I've got this this thickness. I can angle up the side, but if I have this thickness, I can't angle like that. Does that make any sense? So we're trying to keep the thread more straight. So that if the part is thicker, then it can still work. And I'm so sorry that Jacob was not here for that wonderful insanity part. Okay. So what I want to see is let's look at these quarter 20 screws. I'm going to go to the viewpoint here, and you guys can hit half section view. And you're going to use this in your assemblies. Because you're going to go all the way through and make sure your screws are the correct sizes. Because I've seen a lot of people put screws in, you can't see inside your assembly, and they forgot to stretch the length of their screws. And they're really super nubby, but you couldn't tell from outside. So let's select a side here and let's drag it down. Uh oh. There it is right there. <laughs> now, if you say, okay, this thing is not near long enough. What happened to this? What's going on with that? They're only one inch long and our plate. Well, these are only seven eighths inch long. None of these are going to go through here. So let's look at the size and let's figure out what the minimum engagement is and let's put the correct screw in. Minimum thread engagement? Yeah. Okay. What is, how do you figure out the minimum thread engagement? And I think I've told you guys this one time before. Super easy. Yeah. So how much? of the diameter. Is it one times the diameter, two times, three times? It's one and a half times. Okay, everybody. And I'm going to give you something. We're going to do this calculation for our engines. You have to put in the correct length of screws into your engines. We're going to do all those calculations so you know what size to put in. But if I have a quarter inch bolt, the minimum thread engagement into the next part, I'm going to draw this like this, the minimum thread engagement from here to here is 1.5 times 
the body or major diameter of the thread. So 0 0.25 is 0.375. All right, so that's a minimum engagement into the hole. Then I've got to think about the M and the C or the thickest this part could get to give me that minimum thread engagement. So the M and C of this, that's one plus 0.02 is 1.02, because it has to go all the way through there by if I knew that at one, it would get thicker and I could not get my 0.375 down here, right? So 1.02 plus 0.375. So I gotta find a bolt that's close to that. Close to that length. Once you get that one so I add those two. 1.395. So I find a bolt that is this at a minimum. I'm going to go longer than that. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. I guess the maximum is just your total length. The maximum, the maximum is total length. Okay. Yeah, that would be fine. You don't want to interfere with something else. But, you know, they're just standard links in the content center thing, right? So let's see if I can do this. I don't know if it'll let me if I brought these bolts in here from something else. Right click, replace from content center. There we go. So there was a change size tab when you right click that. Is that Ooh. in relation to? Well, yeah, let's see if we can do that. Yeah, change size would allow me to change the length. Very good. Thank you. And I didn't know that this was still going to correlate to, because I gave you these bolts. I saved them locally, so I didn't know it's going to correlate. Change size. Let's see if it'll let us do that. So is this driven off the table then? Or? Yep. Okay. This is an eye part. Right. All your screws. All, everything it builds, there we go. Well, that's not just the screws that are in the content center. Well, any screws, nuts, anything that's in content center oh, okay. is all table driven. Okay. Do you have a preference of using hardware out of the content versus mm -hmm. like importing something? So like, no. I don't. You don't care? I don't care. Okay. I just, you know, I'm just trying to teach the software. But, so you missed the most awesome thing. We've determined that I'm insane yeah, because I keep teaching, this, trying to teach the same thing by drawing the same thing over and over and expecting people to get it. However, we just went through how to figure out the minimum engagement of threads. And that's one and a half times the diameter of the bolt. That's the minimum engagement now check it out. That's a minimum engagement into the next part. So what you have to do is you have to have the MMC or the thickest that this is going to be. Because if it comes down, you know, if you factor it in too short, it comes in at the thick side, you're not going to have the minimum engagement. So 1.5 times quarter inch is 0.375. And then we have the thickness of our part is 1. Plus 0.02, that's the thickest it gets. So we add 1.02 to 0.375, that's 1.395. We went through and pulled a cross section through here, and these screws didn't even go into the next part. They were one inch or seven eighths. <laughs> so we right clicked on this and changed size. We can go to one and a half. So let's see what that looks like. Now, the cool thing is I can say replace all that are this size. I don't have to do this one at a time. Yeah, it'll grab everyone that's that size. So you have to watch out when you have a major assembly. You don't want to do all of them. Yeah, that looks better. Now you can see that it changed all these to one and a half. So if you guys want to try that in your assemblies. All right. What about a number eight? What's the body diameter of a number eight? 
Point two forty six. Yep. Excellent. Can still do it. I still got it. All right. Point two forty six is the minimum engagement into our threads. So we still are going to have that to one point oh two because our plate is still the same. One point two sixty six. Let's see what we can change that one to. Oh, no. Won't go that long. I might have to change the screw itself. So that's ASB194BR549. <laughs> So now I'm going to replace from content center. Oh, man. And there it is. Oh, good. So it kind of showed it. Uh, how about we just go with one of these? And this is going to be your problem, too. <laughs> Let's try. That's uh, tapping. I don't need a self-tapping. I don't need sheet metal. I just need countersink. So that might have been a problem right there. That is curious. It's going to match the ID of your hole. Or do you have to change those two? <laughs> the ID of... Oh! Um, I'm just going to select... So I'm going to select it. Let's see. Let's see if it has me auto place or not. Yeah, I see. Let's try this one, type two inch, uh, type two, that's a normal thing. Okay. So this is showing me number eight. And there we go. Okay. You just needed more options. I did. Let's go for 1.375. Now is that, doesn't tell me if it's fine or coarse. What does it say on your drawings, you guys? Is that a coarse thread on a number eight? UNC or UNF? They're all UNC, I think. Okay, I'm going to say replace all and say okay. Now it gave me some errors, so what's going on? Uh-oh. So what if I just take these out and I place them? Why are there three of them? Don't we just have two? Yeah. Are you just having to reconstrain it? Yeah. Well, I don't need three of them. I think there's two right on top of each other. So let's go underneath this one. This flush is not making. So if I edit this one, I think it's this top. And say okay. And it'll say, oh, you got another one. Is it going to the other one? I don't know what it's doing. It looks like it's yeah. On top of each other? Yeah. That flush made it. That flat flush made. Usually just that one made. And here's the mate. That one made it. This one needs to be done. What a pain. Okay, and then this flush is not making. Bless you. 
Okay. Save. All right. Now, the last one is what? Number 10. And these are too short. So what size is the number 10 body? Two eighty five. Yeah. Woo! Right. Yeah, Plus. <laughs> Point two eighty five plus a one point oh two thickness MMC of the next one that's one point two uh, three oh five yes yes we're, we're probably going to go to one and a halves on those two let's see if we can change the size on this one yes. Okay, replace all. Go. Nice. Woo. Okay, now let's see how much minimum engagement we have of our thread. So I'm going to measure from the bottom of this thread, not from the bottom of the screw, to the top of the plate. I'm going to disable this part. When you disable it, you don't have to dig through it. So I'm going to measure... M is alias for measure. I'm going to measure from this to this. 0.357. Is that less than the thickness of the plate? This one is 0.102. Oh. And MMC, 0.357 is less. Are, are any of these going to be? Um, let me do this. Have section view, and then I'll drag this one to the next one. There we go. Come on, buddy. Oh, I'm there. Point three five seven six five, still less than the thickness of the other plate. And what else do we have to do? These little suckers down here. Can you physically see that? Can you see it? Can you see that this is longer than this? I can visually see it. So all three of those threaded holes need a protected tolerance zone. How much is it going to be the protected tolerance zone that we're going to give it above the part? So remember that I have my threaded part down here. I want to go to the top of the next part. I'm going to project it up this far. So that's going to be the MNC of the clearance hole part. So it's all going to be 1.02 because it's one and it can get thicker by 0.02 because it's two place dimension. When you look in the feature control frame, I mean the tolerance block, it gives you a 0.02. All right, so I'm going to end the section view here. And I need to enable this part. It turns green over here. So I can right-click and enable it so I don't have to dig through it. And I'm going to save that with all my new hardware. Okay, so which one is it? The bottom. Every one of these is going to have a projected tolerance zone. So there it is. It's a circle with a P, and you put in one, 
plus its tolerance to get to its thickness, so 1.02. That is the same number of decimal places as the thickness of the part. This does, is, does not change with any tolerances. Your protected tolerance zone is what it is. Doesn't matter what, no tolerances apply to anything in the, in the feature control frame. One point oh two. What about this one? The engagement in that is the thickness of the other part. It's got 100% engagement. So we don't need any projected tolerance zone on that. Plus it's not a threaded hole, right? We did that on threaded holes. So we're only gonna have it on those three. Do we need to put in the engagement? So I'm just gonna put a note on here, okay? Projected tolerance zone. So that you remember. Used only if. And this will blow somebody's mind if you do this on an interview. The engagement of threads is less than MMC of plate with the clearance hole. And what was that? 1.02. No, I don't tell you guys to mimic my notes because, you know, insanity over here. I can be saying it five times and you still don't understand it. So you want your notes so that you can remember what the heck you're saying. You put it in your own words so that you understand it, right? Now let me look at this. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm putting it in here. I'm doing it. And I'm going to make, <laughs> we'll put it over here and I'm going to make a section view of it. Watch this. Oh, Lord, can I do it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that looks horrible. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work at all. However, <laughs> that was worth a shot. <laughs> so I can edit this. Hoot. Forget about it. I'll just draw a line through here. This would be cool to have in a drawing. 
Look at that. Mm -mm. Okay. Check this out. I'm going to break alignment. Then I can suppress this view. Oh yeah, I've got something to remember this by. Like a keepsake. <laughs> awesome. You can tell I'm, I'm horrible. I get, I'm such a nerd. I just get so tickled at the simplest little things. You don't have to agree with that, by the way. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. That is the end of that. So I need to create an assignment so that you can upload these and get a 100, another 100. You need a bunch of 100s. Okay. So what I've got over here for you today if you're not taxed enough. Because I want you, this is something good for your portfolio. And you can download the um, the Word document out of the exercise that I'm now adding to the Blackboard. I want you to make these square tolerance zones in round ones. And this is another easy one, but it's participation in this class, not examination, okay? All right, so check it out. I'm going to do one of these, but the first one, you need to remember it. So here it is. So we've done some things today to learn. We drew some pictures for you visual people. We typed all this stuff out for you guys to have to write it down. All right, and what else do we need? And then I've said it the same way 50,000 times, which is insanity. So I've tried to touch on your learning styles. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through 